Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, we've been building these little buttons with that background animation there. Somebody asked if we could do it with the menu items, so we did it with the menu items up here. Today I'm going to show you how you can do it with any module. It's really easy to do. And also at the end, I'll show you how you can put it over an image and combine it with another module to create that effect on the background and a fade in text over image effect, just like that. Really easy to do. So let's get started. To do this today, I'm going to be using the additional CSS panel in the customizer for anybody that doesn't know how to get there. Go down to your dashboard. Once at the dashboard, you can go down to appearance and customize. You can also put this code down in Divi in your custom CSS panel. But we're going to use the customizer for this today so we can see what's happening in real time. Once you get to the customizer page, if you look down, we've got an additional CSS panel on the bottom here. This is where we can write our code. And I'm going to delete what I've got already for this one and we'll start from scratch. OK, keep this easy. Let's start back up at the top. If you've got anything in your additional CSS panel, you can put your cursor to the left of it and just scoot it on down. And we'll give this a title. It's always a good idea to give your custom CSS a title. Title is forward slash star star forward slash. Anything that you write in between will not be read as code. So it's a great place for titles and notes and things like that. Uh, color slide, hover effect. Obviously, put whatever you want. It wants to be fairly descriptive. Okay, well, the first thing we want to do is create a class that we can use to create this effect here. So let's put a dot there. All class names have a dot or a period in front. So you want to start off with a dot and we'll call it slide cull for sliding color. You can call yours what you want, but it wants to be unique. Then we can open and close some curly brackets. And we can start telling it what we want. Well, we're going to be using the code that we used on these buttons. So let's just go and steal that. And for anybody that doesn't have that code, all this code will be down below the video if you need to look at it or copy and paste it. So if we go back to our page now, let's just enable the visual builder. Now, once we're in the builder, let's go down to the button where we had that code. We'll go into the button over to the advanced custom CSS module elements. We were actually using the before element for this. So we'll do that again with our code today. I'm going to copy all of this. Control A, select all, Control C to copy. So if we go back, we're using the before element. So to make sure we're using the before element so it'll appear behind it, I'm going to put a colon there. No gap at the end of our class name, colon, and the word before. We're now editing the pseudo element. I'm going to paste all this code in here. Control V to paste. I'm going to get rid of those comments there. Don't need them anymore. Great. Let's make sure we got rid of everything there we have. Let's publish this code. And I'll shut up my duplicate customizer I had open over there. And if we refresh this page now, our effect should be gone from our modules yet. Yeah, yeah, that's gone. Gone, that's fine. Great. Well, we've got our content. We've got the color that we want there, which is actually a red. So I want to change that to a different color, perhaps. So let's go back to our page. I'm going to pull it over the right side here. What I'm going to do is close that down. I'm just going to save this and refresh it. And we'll refresh the page. Great. Now with our rollover, nothing's going to happen. Now to apply this to a module, we need to give it that class name. We use a class of sl slide cull. So I'm going to copy that control C. Let's give it to one of our modules and see what's going to happen. I'm going to go into the module, I'm going to go over to advance, custom CSS IDs and classes. There's the old class I used. Let's put a new one in there. 
And incidentally, if you, there's already class in there, it's okay to put a gap and put a second class in there. That's fine. And what we can see there, let's get rid of this one, is our little red color that's going to slide in when we hover. But really, we don't want to see that. That's overflow from our little module here. So we need to hide any overflow on this to make sure that we don't see that. So we can add that to our code so it's done all the time. Let's just save this. We'll go back over here. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to put my class name in there again. Dot. And then the class name. I'm going to open it up. With some little curly brackets there. I'm going to say overflow. Colon hidden. Because we don't want to see that red sticking out the side there. Now let's just save our changes on this page. Publish our changes in the additional CSS here. And when I refresh this page, go down, we should have something happening here, but nothing's actually happening. It's because we haven't told that color to go from width left of minus 100, that's why it was over to the left-hand side, back to normal there. So if we just copy this class name up here with the before, paste it in there, I'm going to go to the end of our class name there, the L, put my cursor there. I'm going to put another colon in there and no gap and the word hover. So we've got slide col, colon, hover, colon, before. So we've got a hover version of our before here. And to bring it back, just need to bring that left back to zero. So we'll say left, colon, zero, semicolon. As you can see, that red's now flying in over the top there. And that's just exactly what we want. I think I'm going to change that red that we've got here to our default blue color. I've got a free Chrome color picker here. Let's just change that. Grab that code right there. I'm going to replace it with our red. And let's just publish this code. Now, if we go back to our page, we can refresh this page again. And roll on down. Now we've got that blue color sliding in and out over the top. Fantastic. And to have any other module do that, you can just go into any other module. Give it that same class name, advanced CSS IDs. There's the old class name, a new one. We'll slide, col. And we've got it happening to this one as well. And like I say, you can do that to pretty much any module. Now to have it happen on one of these images here and have a module fade in over the top, that's really easy too. Let's just save what we've got here. I'm going to delete the modules we've got here. In fact, I'll delete the whole row. We'll start from scratch. Let's just add a new row. If you want it over some images, just add a couple of images. Okay, let's add the module we want to pop up, which is perhaps a blurb module. I'm going to have it have an icon, perhaps. So image and icon, I'm going to flip the switch to use icon. I use that one right there. I'm going to go to design. And that text, I'm going to have it all in the middle there. I'm going to change it all to light in color. It will disappear against our background there. That's fine. My icon right at the top, I want that to be white also, perhaps a little bit smaller. So I'm going to turn it white. I'm going to make it about 30 pixels in color. Just so you can see what's going on, let's put the image in the background that we want to slide this over. To do that, we want to go into the row itself, into the column. Background's always under content there. Third tab along is image. Let's add a background image. Now we'll use that one. And while we're in here, we'll do the other column as well. You won't see much because there's no content in it. You can see our little blurb module right there. So we'll save this one. Takes us back to the row settings in the second column. I'm going to put another image. There we go. Like I say, you won't see a whole lot because there's no content in that one at the moment. Now let's save all that. We'll go back into our module here. Let's give it 
bit of padding all around, say 50 pixels to give it a bit of shape. So I'm going to go to design. Spacing is always where you'll find padding. I'm going to give it 50 pixels all around. Just put in the 50, it'll put in the pixels. Hit the chain, it does the opposite side view. And we'll do the same for right and left. Great. And if we go to CSS IDs and classes, we need to give it that class name or we'll slide cull. And when we hover over, we've got that blue come in. But I don't want to see the actual blurb image writing until that has come in all the way. So we can do that without any more coding. We can go to design, down to our filters. And we've got opacity here. If I roll up over it, comment all Divi modules if you roll up over you'll see a little arrow there. Click on it, we can create a desktop state when the mouse is not on it. When the mouse is not on it, I don't want to see it at all. I just want to see that nice picture. And then when they hover over it, I want it to come back because it'll have that nice background and they'll be able to read it. Now, if you want to match the timings of these, if we look back at our customizer, we use 0.3 of a second. I'm going to slow that down a little bit. Let's make that half a second just for fun. 0.5 seconds. And we'll publish it. Go back to our page now. And you can change down the hover effect time. The default's 300 milliseconds. If we go to advanced and transitions, that's where you'll find your 300. You can slide it up to match the one that we're using in our CSS, which is 500 milliseconds or half a second. You can fine tune with the little arrows there if you need to. I'm going to leave it just like that. And once you've got one of these, of course, you can just duplicate it, move one across, change out the content, and you'll still have all those effects on there. Now, if we save our changes now, and exit the Visual Builder, we'll go down. Here's our first one. It should be taking half a second now to just roll in. Great. And the one down here, half a second again. And the one with our image in the background, half a second for it to come in, and another half a second for that fade in effect for the text to happen. And that's a really nice little feature to have on your website. Now that's great, but I kind of wouldn't mind having that blue color slightly opaque so we can get a bit of the image see through through there. If you want to do that, we can add two digits to the end of our hex color here. Starting off from 0, 0 and going up to 99. I'm going to put mine maybe at about 90. And we'll publish here. If I refresh this page again. Roll over this image. You can see a little bit of that image through there. If you wanted to see a bit more of that image. You could take that 90 value down some. I'm pretty happy with that. In fact, I might go into my module itself and make that text bold now that we've done that, just so it's slightly easier to see. Very easily done. We just go down to our little module here. We can go to the text, title text, Let's make it semi-bold. And of course with Divi, you could get a crazy amount of fonts. If you want to change fonts and audition one, just roll over it. It'll give you an example of that particular font. I really leave mine on the default there. Once we've done the title, we can go into our body text and do the same thing. I'm just going to change it from regular to semi-bold. And we should be good to go. Save our changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. Go on down. Now our blue should be a little paler here because it's slightly opaque. That works quite nicely. And similar down here, we should see some of the image through it. Great. I quite like that effect. And down here where we've added the module on top, we should see a bit of that robot and we can read that writing nicely. That's great. 
So we've kind of reused this code three times now. We've used it for our buttons here originally, then on our menu up here, and then for a hover effect that you can put on just about any module you want. And also combine it with other effects to have a module slide in over an image. That's a nice little effect right there. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have enjoyed this today and have enjoyed CSS, take a look at our simple CSS playlist. It should drop down on the left-hand side there any minute now. And there's plenty of examples of this, and most of it I've done all the coding for you. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.